this dream from time to time. It always leaves me feeling empty, hopeless. I guess it's my fear of what this place can become. I came to the Gulf of the Farallons over 20 years ago. I never left. I've been around the sea my entire life. When I was young, I hung out along the beaches of Southern California where I surfed and indulged in short-lived pleasures with long-term consequences. Eventually, I started working as a diver. I came to Bodega Bay in 1989. For a big city surf rat, it was a whole new world. I never know what to expect when I cross the Gulf. I've made the trip by myself more times than I can count. But the truth is, I've hardly ever been alone. Things change fast out here. Sunny one second, socked in the next. The fog rolls in and out of the gulf like the tide. It hides everything, including the Farallon Islands that are just 30 miles from the Golden Gate Bridge. Probably why most people in San Francisco don't even know they're there. The islands are just five miles from the edge of the continental shelf, where cold, nutrient-rich water from the deep sparks the entire food chain.
I knew the island's reputation before I ever came here. I'd heard about the sharks. I guess that's what attracted me. I figured lots of sharks meant less people. That was just fine with me. Like I said, things change fast out here. The fog vanishes as quickly as it appears. It's hard to imagine what this place must have been like at one time. For millions of years, it remained untouched by humans. That all changed in the 1800s when people learned that there was money to be made in the Gulf. Men braved treacherous seas in tiny boats. Sealers slaughtered over a hundred thousand seals in just three years. There were actual gunfights over seabird eggs. By 1896, Eggers had taken 14 million of them. A lot of those guys came here to get rich. Some just looking for a new life. I came here for the urchins. On my first dive at the islands, I was amazed at their numbers. The seafloor was like a huge plain just waiting to be harvested. And the urchin business was all about harvesting as much as you could. To break the monotony, I started bringing a video camera on my dives. Through the viewfinder, I began to see beyond the urchins a whole world of creatures going on about their lives as though I wasn't there. Every once in a while, something totally unexpected would show up. And of course, there were always the sea lions. And the sharks. I started out defiant of the sharks. More than once, I was sure I was gonna get bit. Never happened kind of made me wonder why they'd pass up on such an easy meal. After a while, even the sharks paid me little notice. Circling on the edge of visibility, like ghosts. Now I feel lucky to see them at all. Didn't take long to realize that the sharks only took what they needed. They were less menacing to me than a sea lion is to a fish. There was a perfect balance in it all that I wasn't feeling part of. Fishing didn't feel right anymore, so I got rid of my urchin gear. But I kept the camera. And I got a hold of another camera that I attached to my air hose to get a bird's eye view of me 
and I hoped, a great white. Most people thought I was crazy hanging out waiting for sharks. But the reality is, even great whites have to watch their backs. Yo, over here. A few years ago, a whale watching boat came upon a couple of orcas sharing a meal. Turns out, that meal was a great white. We all have our predators. To me, the most voracious of all is human. By the time the last American whaling ship set out from San Francisco Bay in 1972, the writing was on the wall. After over 200 years of being ravaged, the Gulf was simply running out of animals to kill. Eventually, people started caring for the gulf. The islands became a national wildlife refuge. The Gulf of the Farallons, a national marine sanctuary. Though the gulf is only a mere shadow of what it once was, as a sanctuary, it has begun to heal. And I guess you could say, I healed along with it. For most of my life, I treated myself like we treated the Gulf. I did what felt good in the moment without thinking about the future. I took it to the edge, saw the most powerful fish in the sea show incredible restraint. And I came to understand that in order to survive, we'll have to do the same. This all became clear to me pretty late in the game. The Gulf has a second chance but the clock is ticking. We put so much in and take so much out of the sea. We've enjoyed the sea in the moment without always thinking about tomorrow. And now that tomorrow's here, I worry about what the future holds for my grandkids. People don't always start off down the right road, but they have a way of coming around. We've taken the first step, but we have a lot of tough work ahead. The question is, do we have the courage to see it through?